I'm Marcia Martin, and this is the 2021 series of Capital Conversations. And I am here with regular Sonia Jaquez Lewis, this year a member of the state Senate, and she is still working hard to improve Colorado. And this first session is going to be about uh, energy and environment and the bills that she is sponsoring or preparing to sponsor uh, in the legislature. Um, and, you know, we all are interested about that because, uh, you know, Longmont is, has, is working hard to be a leader um, in, in clean energy. So, Sonia, could you please give us uh, a good summary of, of what you're working on? Absolutely. Well, Marsha, City Councilwoman Martin, thank you so much for having me back. Um, so proud to be a Longmont resident and starting into my very first session as a state senator. Uh, you know, our Senate district is Longmont, Lafayette, Louisville, and the Boulder County side of Erie, and our district is a leader in wanting to encourage sustainable energy, promote uh, everything we can do for reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and to obviously try to control climate change. And I think we have some bills coming up in this session that will address some of that. So I'm so glad that we have a moment to talk about it. Uh, we have not started the session. We'll, we'll be back on February 16th. We took a pause uh, for COVID and to allow our hospitalization numbers to come down. Uh, we think that was a smart thing to do because as anticipated, we our positivity rate is looking much better. Uh, and we're hoping we can address some of the urgent needs from the COVID pandemic at the same time uh, as addressing our progressive issues like green energy. So one of the areas that I'm going to be very involved in and that you'll see coming out of the session, I hope, is a effort to increase energy storage in Colorado. So the, one of the proposals that's coming is actually from the Colorado Energy Office. So they did a report that we need to set a storage target for the state. And the way to do that is to direct the PUC, the Public Utilities Commission, to value the contributions of all energy storage uh, in our energy resource plans and to strike a better balance um, for all utilities, but really a better balance in sustainable energy. And, and that could be uh, realigning our distribution grid. It could be looking at our transportation grid. So let me stop there and uh, see if I've sparked any uh, conversation with that, Marsha. What do you think? Well, I, I think that that's a, a good focus area. And it brings to mind some of the things that we are um, working on here in Longmont. We have just funded um, a project to put solar arrays on or associated with three public buildings in Longmont, large ones, you know, um, public utility buildings, the waste management plant. And um, that installation does have um, utility scale battery storage associated with it. Um, that's fantastic. That, that's, that's exactly what we need more municipalities and local governments to do. Good, good. We're, and, and that's, you know, that's a start. This is three megawatts, uh, which is not nothing, um, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, just to start. Um, so what I would like to ask is, um, are you expecting that the legislature uh, would come out with um, forms of assistance uh, for projects like that as a result of what you're working on? I really hope so. I know there is going to be uh, some legislation, either budgetary or in statute, to create some incentives for renewable energy storage projects in particular. 
So the one way we could do that is to provide parity in the way that tax assessments are done for projects. Because obviously you have tax assessments on electrical and, and other forms of more conventional uh, fossil fuels. But what, what we really need are in incentives for our sustainable and green energy sources. And if we can strike a balance in that, um, I think that there might be a way for us to increase these uh, incentives for the renewable energy when it comes to storage projects. And I'll be actually really transparent about something else I hope we can address, which is we really need to look at PUC reform. So the Public Utilities Commission reform, because in the past, it's really been focused on what I would say is not the green energy sources, not sustainable. Mm -hmm. And we can advance the way the PUC assesses uh, energy projects, but I'm hoping that that might be something that we can take a look at. I know that the governor has appointed some new commission members and, and that certainly is a great start. Um, and But I, I, again, I think we can do much more. And Marcia, if you don't mind one more, one more minute on, on, especially on solar, mm -hmm. you know, there's an issue going on with local communities. If you look at the permitting process in say Boulder County mm -hmm. or ev even other local municipalities, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's an assessment done of your property. You pay a permitting fee. What we've learned in looking at solar projects across the state is that there is a huge range of what happens with those permitting costs. I'm not gonna name any names here, but there are municipalities that are charging thousands of dollars for solar permits for residential. And then there are other municipalities that are in hundreds, 100, 200, 300. Uh -huh. And that's to cover some of the cost of the permitting and the inspectors and all of that. Why, why would there be such a huge difference there? So, you know, I think that might be an area that, that you'll see some work in. That uh, a, a leveling of that would be really good because I know from my personal experience on the city council that depending who is in charge of the distribution utility, there are lots of ways to look at that. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, I hadn't, that's, that's really good for me because I hadn't even considered our local permitting costs, but now I will. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah and if you, we can get you some of that data because really when you think about it, front range uh, municipalities should have fairly similar cost, I would think. Yeah. Uh, at, at, because you have some of the same infrastructure, uh, but you know, you're know you seeing quite a cost differential. So we'd love to see if we can even that out. And maybe there's even informational ways that we can share between one county's permitting and another. Uh, you know, it, to me, it just makes common sense. It certainly, it certainly does, especially with, you know, the new data that, that comes out. Um, Longmont has a rate disincentive um, to install solar. Um, you know, it's not a big one. Um, and it was designed in the name of social equity because the data at the time indicated that, um, that people who couldn't afford to put solar panels on their roof and get net metering going were subsidizing the people who could afford it, which normally were, you know, richer than the people who couldn't. Um, but with um, be, between losing the, the cost of transmission uh, when you generate locally and between that and um, uh, putting energy back on the grid that lowers the uh, demand for electricity at the most expensive times of day and with the way demand charges are structured even more so by then uh, really, it, it's starting to work out now that it's the other way around and that solar generators are subsidizing everybody else. Uh, 
Great. Um, and I was taught to tell people that, you know, investing in solar means you're investing in the planet. It doesn't mean you're investing in your own personal economy. But that too is turning around both because of the rate advantages and because of the dropping cost of domestic solar. So now we are looking at ways to um, make it so that everybody can get on this train and, and profit from the opportunities of local generation and storage um, right. one way or the other. So I hope that's being considered. What can you tell me about it? Yeah, no, that's exactly, because if we can even out the tax assessment between the energy, uh, the forms of energy creation, mm. you, even if you're not able to put solar on your dwelling, your home, you could invest in it, because if mm. the tax assessments are not uh, more uh, incentivized for our sustainable energy, then how are investors going to choose to invest more in solar and wind and all, all of our you know hydrogen, all of our, our greener energy sources. So you're getting at the heart of how can we make those energy sources um, able so that everyone can participate in one way or another. Uh, so yeah, I, that's exactly the direction we're going. If you don't mind, I'll spend another minute on another type of solar mm -hmm. We are a leader in the state here in Longmonts and Senate District 17. We have, and many, many of your viewers may know about Jack's Solar Garden, uh, which is a wonderful facility uh, right off of uh, 95. Uh, that facility is doing what we call agrivoltaics. And that is another source of combining two um, industries. One is solar energy because they are a solar farm, mm -hmm. a solar community garden, but they're also a farm, a, a you know, regular farm that produces um, all kinds of plants and vegetables. And, and importantly, because it's one of my big areas, pollinator plants. Wow. So, it's yes, exactly. You know, I'm a bee lover and a and a butterfly lover and a, a bird lover for sure. So we got to protect our pollinators. And what Jax is doing with Agra Voltaics mm -hmm. is basically creating a solar uh, generation form. It's solar panels that are high enough off the ground that Byron, who's the owner, is they're able to plant plants underneath the solar panels and then they can tilt them so that the plants are able to get the sun and the light that they need to grow. And we, we I mean, this just makes sense. It helps farmers have an, another source of, of income so that they're not relying on selling off their water rights or having to uh, to do things with fracking which event those are all uh you know non-sustainable resources whereas if we can do more of this agra voltaics and have farming and solar generation at the same time to me that's that's the direction we need to be heading we're not doing enough a promotion of that, in my opinion. We have to create an opening for those types of energy sources to have a fair playing field with other utility utilities. So there's so much more that we can do, and I can't wait until we can uh, tackle that. You know, we, we really uh, need to do more to help that kind of industry, because you're doing two things at one time. And Mm -hmm. And it makes it, and it's sustainable. It just makes sense. Yeah, you know that is a, a wonderful idea, and um, I am. It's put the idea into my head that 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 agrivoltaic aspect of it may expand the sort of Longmont public land that can be used that way. Yes. Yes. Um, there's other communities uh, in the state looking at doing 
exactly that. It's a great way to put some of the public lands that we want to keep, but at the same time have functionality, create sustainable energy. There's a whole division at CSU that is working with Jack's Solar Garden. There's, uh, there's researchers um, out of state that are working and Boulder County, of course, leading the way again, has been working with Byron at, at Jack Solar Garden. So I'm hoping that we can get some wonderful data out of that. And I'm hoping that we can save the bees because we're, we're definitely losing our pollinators at an alarming rate. Well, that's a wonderful idea. And I just have to put in one last plug for Longmont, which is thank you to Longmont's voters um, in the last election. We um, arranged our public land use so that we could have long-term leases for investments just like what you are describing. So maybe we have opened the door for some of these opportunities between what the state does and, and what the city does. And uh, I would like to thank you, Senator Jaquez Lewis, for giving us this kind of preview of, of coming attractions um, about clean energy in Colorado. And um, I hope that when the legislature is farther advanced uh, and we know more about how these are gonna shake out, then you can come back and talk to us uh, about it again because it's one of the top topics on everybody's mind in Longmont. I agree, we, we need to do more. And if you don't mind, I'll just even share my email if folks wanna get involved or help out, it's so easy. Senator Sonia, Sonia with a Y at uh, sd17 at gmail.com. So Senator Sonia, sd17 gmail.com. We, we would love people to get more involved. That's wonderful, and I will put that on the bottom of the screen before this goes public. All right, so thank you, Senator Hawkins-Lewis, once again. Thank you so much for having me.